<laughs> it's a lot. Hey, what's up, King Son? Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, Daddy. You putting in that work. I'm proud of you. I love you. Meek Mill just put everything on the table, revealing how he was wronged. It seems like Meek finally hit his breaking point, coming forward with claims that he was allegedly set up in a web of serious accusations. The drama kicked off when Meek's name got pulled into a lawsuit against Diddy, where Diddy was accused of serious allegations, including drugging and sexual abuse, with Meek reportedly being one of the victims. One of the big topics uh, coming out of this week was a producer that worked with Diddy named Little Rod did a lawsuit. And in that lawsuit, he alleged um, a lot of things one of which is that um, he was slipped one of the famous drinks that Diddy does and then he woke up um, feeling like something had happened to him during the night. I can't say the word on YouTube, but people know what I'm talking about. And he also alleged that Meek Mill and Diddy had a relationship, a sexual relationship. I wanted to see if you had read any of this or if you had any reaction to people actually coming out now and saying that Diddy does stuff with men that's not just the Cassies and the um, escorts and whatnot. Well, yeah. You know, I love I love y'all when y'all act like this on YouTube, like y'all haven't been here and Reggie Wright speak on this stuff. <laughs> I've been, I told y'all, I said, real soon, well, it's gonna start coming out about men because Puffy, is not paying for male escorts, ordering up male escorts if he's not doing it for his enjoyment. You only order up female escorts and other females if you get down like that. You don't be ordering up no male unless you want that male with you. So for all the others acting shocked and surprised, I said somebody's gonna come out and expose him real soon. And of course, that's what's happening. It's unfortunate that uh, stuff like that happened to people. I know y'all believe in that Illuminati stuff. I don't believe in that Illuminati. I'm gonna tell y'all up front. And y'all say now because the powers in the B is not protecting Puffy is the reason that uh, these people are, are coming out and suing them. No, well, hey, why? Because now uh, once you pay out people, and that's why when he paid out that that judgment, the next thing I told him that was bad. Because when attorneys will take on cases and say, hey, this dude paying out this quick, he'll pay us a million dollars right quick or $300,000, whatever, if he wants stuff to go away. And, you know, I'm sure the insurance companies that he has that mainly, y'all don't know, is the one that be paying those things out. I try to educate y'all on it's usually your company insurance companies that, that pay them out and make the decisions. When you have the business insurance or the businesses, you have the different type of insurance that make you pay out the thing. Because by the time you have all of the different lawyers and stuff involved, it's just as quick to sell a case. So that's a, unfortunately is what's happening to Puffy. Everybody's gonna come out of the Woolworths. So anyway, I'm not trying to say that he don't deserve any of these these uh, lawsuits. I don't believe about Meek Mills. I'm a Meek Mill fan. I don't know what happened. I noticed when he talked about it though. <sighs> Meek Mills didn't deny it. <laughs> like I said, I don't want to believe that uh, that is true. But I am one of those like y'all. When I don't say you motherfucking crazy. I ain't never did no like that <laughs> then it's usually some smoke uh, with that fire and so I'm not up here saying Meek Mills was involved in that thing I'm not saying Usher <laughs> yeah I am uh, or, or Justin Bieber and all of them <sighs> Puffy gonna turn out to be our modern day uh oh y'all about to get mad he gonna be Mike, you know, my, our modern day Michael Jackson is what Puffy turned out to be, in my opinion. That's my opinion, my opinion only. Oh, I know black folks get mad when we say Michael was doing that stuff, but 
I believe Michael like uh, doing things with little boys as well. That was my opinion. Uh, Y'all ask me how I know. Well, I know a ledge victim that was around us. He's a very, very good friend with Ray J today. But anyway, uh, oh man, it's hard for me to say whether this stuff is true or not. I'm not going to get up there and start debating it. But, but that's not all. Things got even more intense. Meek also spoke about some frightening incidents, including a car accident that nearly cost him his life. He hinted that it might not have been just an accident, especially with all the tension surrounding Diddy. Online, people have started linking it to Diddy's alleged threats and shady behavior, and Meek's been vocal about it on social media. I heard it. I've been telling y'all, all Puffy's been giving y'all all the signs that he's trying to come out of the closet. Hope he just finally just come out of the closet. It's obvious in 2024, we don't care. Society don't care no more. They done TV shows and all of that them brainwashers that said half of y'all, well maybe 10% of y'all in the comment section take and hey, that's just the era we live in. I have a problem with gang. Y'all say, well, why you care what a man doing and all that? Because that's one of the main reasons of God flooded the world and, and set the world on fire and did all the stuff that he did because he was mad when he found out that men were down here having sex with animals and having sex with other men and stuff like that. That was the one thing that pissed off God. You know, read your Bible, y'all learn. I know there's more, more to it than what I just explained, but that was the, the gist of what happened. So that's why I have a problem with homosexuality. But I know in 2024, I'm from an old school where in the 80s and the 90s, people that were doing that were hiding it. But and now y'all out with it. So, hey, that's on y'all. But my point is, to saying that is, Puff need to just come on out with it. Because no lawsuits and stuff is going to keep, people going to keep blackmailing him and threatening him and they're trying to expose him with these things because they think that he's scared of these things coming out. And once you don't give a fuck and tell them, I don't care. Do what y'all gotta do. These were adults, these weren't kids. Everybody that did something like that wanted it. It ain't too much that's gonna be happening. The next thing that's gonna be happening, and uh, after this is now, you're gonna start seeing some criminal investigations getting opened. And uh, because when you get too much of the smoke, uh, law enforcement generally gets involved. So that'd be the next thing that will be happening to, to Puffy, unfortunately, for his sake. Y'all know, I'm one that believes if you ain't getting psychological help, getting some type of help, and you're a victim, you gotta come right away with me and tell it. Then you're a victim to me. But when you're talking about it and you haven't been getting some type of psychological help, then you 10, 15 years later want to come talk about it? Y'all better not ever have me on no jury for no like that. Because I'm going to be like, get the fuck out of here. Why didn't you bring it up when you happened? That's what's supposed to happen to victims and victims to me. There's the stuff come out immediately not years later, not when you finally find an attorney to take the case because they find this open season and they seeing that you opening up the checkbook and stuff like that. And so that's what's happening to y'all boy Puff, P Diddy, and brother love and all of that. But don't act like y'all just starting to hear it. Cause I've been telling y'all the brother is a homosexual. And he's fighting it, trying to hide it, and he needs to just come clean. Yeah. He'll be good. Y'all remember when I told y'all that deal on that last video? All y'all need to apologize in the comment section too. When I told y'all that his deal wasn't, 
he still owned, had that deal with Ciroc. And when I talked about it, everybody was like, oh, they already did away with him. And I told y'all, ain't true. And, and then you can't just take stuff from him. Well, then y'all just see the article a couple of months later where they settled with him and they made a deal with him. I'll be trying to tell y'all stuff, but I love for y how y'all go listen to other motherfuckers on YouTube and all you YouTube attorneys. But when y'all want to hear stuff, know stuff, get it right, y'all know what to call. Ball first. You get it first. That's why we bomb on. Meek is calling out anyone trying to tarnish his name, ready to clap back hard. He's making it clear that he won't let these allegations slide without a fight and isn't afraid to call out top industry figures he believes are trying to bring him down. He's all about standing his ground and pushing back against what he calls a smear campaign. A lot of people upset, you know, but then a lot of people love my opinion. That's why you bring me on here. And, and I really appreciate that, brother. Um, I just want to say this before we get started, Art. Right? is that, you know, a lot of people think I came here to bring a black man down. And that's what I hear in the comments a whole lot. But it was nothing like that. You know, a black man didn't cuss a dead man's mother out. A black man didn't um, set his friends up and put them in a situation where they couldn't come home to their families no more. A black man didn't reach back and help the people that helped them make it up the lap. It was Puffy. You know what I'm saying? I got tired of Puffy going on different platforms talking about how he loved the people that we was all with. How he loved the people that helped him when in fact none of that stuff was true. So. My whole thing about it is, man, I appreciate your platform for letting me, you know, voice my opinion. And like I said, opinions like an asshole. Some of these cats out here get paid for their asshole. I get paid to give my opinion. Yeah, I feel you, man. I mean, yeah, you just on here giving your opinion, man. I mean, you was one of the people that was real close to the situation, so why not? Thank you, I appreciate that. So with that being said, right, the last interview me and you did was a day after the raid. And when you look at everything now, man, how you feel about everything? It's been like a week, you know, you knowing Diddy, you being around Diddy, could you ever imagine that his houses would get raided for sex trafficking? Bruh, you can't imagine no stuff like that. You understand? You can't think that because back then, he wasn't brother love. He was puffy all the way up until he became Diddy. So his behavior over the years has changed. And the behavior that he shows now and that he has shown by being brother love, I couldn't imagine that the police would be raiding him for sex trafficking. Nah, bruh, I couldn't imagine that. You know what I'm saying? That, that wasn't him back then. He's a totally different person than he became. If you've seen him on other platforms, you know, telling, inviting men to party with him, inviting men to go shopping with him. You understand? That wasn't Puffy. That wasn't Diddy. That was brother love and love. How you feel about all the people that's wondering why haven't any of Diddy big name friends came out to defend him? Because either two things that I believe, either they know some of the stuff is true, either they took part in sudden some of the stuff that happened, or they scared that it may make up mess up their brand. See, nobody wants to be in contact with anybody that allegedly was sex trafficking. You see what the WWF did to Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon was one of those people that was called for sex trafficking. We don't hear a lot about it because he gave up the company, he did what he was supposed to do, and he became ghost.
Meek Mill has been dropping some serious revelations about his experiences with Diddy, opening up about feeling manipulated and betrayed by someone he once looked up to as a mentor. He didn't hold back, sharing how Diddy put him in compromising situations that left him feeling used and disrespected. But now, you see, they trying to do the same thing to Puff. They trying to make him the, or hip hop, the face of sex trafficking, like they was going to do the WWF at one time. Because that was a big story. So a lot of his people that know him, a lot of the people that been in those parties and seen probably some unscrupulous sh that went down, it was like, ooh, I was there. I hope they don't got me on tape. They feel in a certain way, so they're not gonna speak on nothing until they've been approached with something. You gotta realize, when Homeland Security get their evidence together, they are gonna send agents out. You understand? They might send an agent out to me. Yo, what do you know? What have you heard? What have you seen? What's been going on? You know what I'm saying? You know, did this happen when you was around him? Did this happen back in the day? That's what they're gonna wanna know. You know what I'm saying? So they're gonna send investigators out. They're gonna send people out for anybody that they can get some information from to help their case. So those celebrities ain't gonna say nothing. You know, you got your man Stevie J speaking on it right now. He'll be one of the first dudes that they will probably pull to the side and say, yo, well, you say that your man, I heard you on TMZ said that he never did this and he never did that, but um, ain't this you? If those pictures or those films or anything like that exists, you know what I'm saying? That's what they, they pay those agents to do. So, of course, I don't believe that none of the people who or his celebrity friends is gonna speak or say nothing until they're either contacted or they know what they really got. So you feel like they might be worried that they might be on tape at one of Diddy parties doing something they wasn't supposed to be doing? I think that the celebrities that may be worried is because what Lil Rob said. Lil Rob said in his affidavit that Diddy had every room Taped and bugged. Diddy had, yo, bruh, can you imagine he had every room taped and bugged and they found little bugs and little tape recorders? I mean, little, 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 those micro um, projectors or whatever like that, or video cameras. They found them in the house, bruh. So by them having those things in the house and people know there's drugs, there's alcohol, there's loose women, there's loose men, woman on woman, man on man, all kind of crazy shit. Bruh, they just wondering who or when they're gonna let this stuff be known. If it's on videotape, yeah, man, I know they gotta be shook, man, after finding out he was recording everything. But not only celebrities, not only celebrities, I don't think it's only celebrities gonna be shook. He had politicians in there. He had princes in there. He also had a couple of preachers in there. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> That's crazy. You personally, you think they got tapes? Well, my personal opinion that if Lil Rob could be trusted and his statement are true, they got him. They got tapes and stuff. Meek also touched on the psychological toll it all took on him revealing that he needed support to get through the mess he was dragged into. He hinted at feeling isolated and targeted, especially as he tried to navigate the toxic side of the music industry. It's not just about the physical or legal battles, Meek is opening up about the emotional and mental scars left behind. 
when the Lil Rod lawsuit came out and there's the gay allegations about Meek Mill as well as Usher, but Meek Mill was the one that got real upset. He said, I'm not gay. Like he's, he's uh, everyone stop asking me if I'm gay. I'm not gay. And then you went in and then he essentially threatened no, to kill you. So, so, so essentially what happened is We've been, you know, I do long live streams. I'm streaming for like five, six hours. Like, you know, when these things are happening, we're not just giving quick takes. Like, I'm going, like even today, I bought the Christian Combs document. Like the entire lawsuit, we're reading it word for word. We want to see what's acting, because a lot of times on these sites, I've always said, like, I, I kind of pride myself on trying to do, go the extra mile. A lot of people just go to like, say, I don't know, Rolling Stones or Variety, and they see a summary of what's in the lawsuit, yeah. and they regurgitate it and even make it even smaller, and they put that out. Yeah. Well. I got time, and people people want deep dives, you know? No diddy. And um, <laughs> we got the, we got a lawsuit. So the Little Rod lawsuit we got. Yeah, I read through the whole thing. And it didn't mention me by name, but it, there was a it's footnote. a Philly rapper who used to date the name, Nicki Minaj. It was like a Jeopardy question. Duh, who yeah. is that? There could only be one person on the planet. Unless so, there's a Philly rapper that also dated Nicki that no one knows about, it's obviously Meek Mill. So essentially, I reacted to, like, I literally found out on stream, like, what the fuck? I'm like, yo, no way Meek Mill was in these freak offs. Like, I know we've seen the video in the pool and the matching outfits, but no. Meek is like the toughest, biggest gangster. Like, he's like a killer. Like, no way he's like getting, you know what I mean, bent over by like, by Diddy, the diddler? So I reacted like, I'm not even believing it. <laughs> that reaction went viral. And the next day, Meek, as I said, he's a special type of stupid, as 50 was said. He's seen me reacting to it and thought, I made it up. <laughs> so the whole, he's like, yo, you know what I'm gonna do to academics when I catch it? Now, previously me and me Meek had a truce. Bro, I seven. remember, because I remember the last couple of times I brought his name, you're like, hey, listen, me and Meek are cool right yeah. now. I don't want to take any shots at him. We had a truce, but Meek and him being so dense and being so dumb, he actually thought that I made up the lawsuit. And by the way, even after he started threatening me and I told, I said, I didn't make it up. I said, just clear up whatever it is. But I didn't make it up. You know what he said? This is clearly AI generated. <laughs> like, I'm like, yo, Meek, you're so, so Meek is so dumb he couldn't even spell AI. Like, how the hell you know this is AI generated? Bro, this is an actual lawsuit. I'm showing him, like, look, it's filed in, in federal court. Right. Nah, this Here's is the lies. PDF file. Exactly. So the PDF's um, AI. <laughs> yeah, so so he basically starts, he says, you know what, man? I'm he's like, yo, he starts going like off the deep end. He hasn't even cleared up the rumors yet. Like, rather than saying, Hey, this is lies. I'm gonna have my attorney, you know, deal with any salacious lies spreading about me like a normal entertainer would. I am not gay or whatever the case is, or I've never been in any sexual situation with Diddy. He says, I'm gonna kill you academics. And what I'm gonna do is, he says, first things first, he says, someone send me academics address. But he said, I'll die to shut you down. Yeah, yeah then he says, I'm going to die to do it. Then it which was is so crazy. Which is crazy. <laughs> which is a crazy thing to say, Meek. Meek is, he's cut it out. You're not gonna die to shut down academics. Meek. You're a multimillionaire with a great career and kids. Cut it out. Yeah, Grow up. Meek literally um, then tweeted out a couple tweets after he said, well, the governor just called me and I was just like, this makes life. Wait, you're planning to murder a lie. <laughs> <laughs> and the governor calls you to talk you out of it? <laughs> like, also, the reason why him and the governor are in cahoots is primarily because he's the guy that um that they kind of taunt around for prison reform. Okay. Right? Yeah. And he's like, yo, I'm gonna go. He's like, I'm down to die over it. Yeah. The, the funny thing, I always tell people, I said, this is a gangster rapper paradox when they're they're threatening um, a civilian. They say this, yo, I'm gonna kill you this and third, and if you actually say, all right, I'm not scared of you still, because you usually back out once they say they're gonna kill you, because they're a gangster rapper, they rap about spinning blocks, blocks and switches, they're the killers of the earth, okay? When you tell me you're not scared of them, they flip it on you. Man, you just trying to trick me out of my position. You trying to send me to jail. Right, he said, I'm gonna treat you exactly to the effects of you influencing I'm gay and I have three sons. I'm getting you Addy now, I'm coming. <laughs> then he told me he was gonna record a video and pee on my steps. And I was like, well, right. I imagine Meek just like sneaking up and like, first I'm like, yo, that's a sexual crime already. And Diddy is already into some shit that you're alleged with. Don't pull out your penis on my property. That's that's a problem. That's a sexual crime. You can't just whip out your dick anywhere, Vlad. You gotta tell these people. Okay. That's a crime. Yeah. So he threatened to come. 
don't come with the same dick that you and Diddy been doing whatever with and come pee on my property. Uh, afterwards, he said that he said the governor basically told him that he should stop beefing with me. And then he went into this whole tirade of how he's going to, uh, oh, I'm going to donate some. Like he's, So I told him, I said, listen, I said, what's not cool is a rapper like you who's pushing 40. There's nothing wrong with age. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. But still acting like, you know, you're one day he, he one night he, he says, because the people in Philly have been saying, you know, you don't even live here. Like, why do you keep acting like like you're still in the trenches? Like. And you're living a bad life. You're living a really good life. You know, he lives like in one of the most expensive high rides in New York City, right? I don't know. Like he just showed off like about like ten expensive cars that sit in that car fix down in South Jersey, right? Mm. This guy's living really good. Yeah. Except he's saying that he's down to spin because people from his home own hometown said, You're not here like that. You're not actually in the hood. You're rich. Two or three of the seven lawsuits involve accusations against Meek Mill, suggesting inappropriate behavior around Diddy. In a surprising turn, a new lawsuit has also recently emerged, adding even more heat to the ongoing legal drama. Well, I want to get into this real quick, man, before we really even get started into this. And it's because something I've seen today. This girl, Tiffany Red, she said that she was filing a claim against Diddy. But it, my man, it touched me crazy, man, because the hurt that I've seen in her voice, in her her, she crying, man, and she worrying about what this dude could do to her and what he has done to her. Man, listen here, I want to let this young lady know, and I know this is not the place for it, brother, but please allow me to say this to her, man. You know what I'm saying? I started this battle a long time ago, and the situation is, is that, bruh, we already won. This was some spiritual sh that pop, the spirit of pop, the spirit of big, the spirit of Miss Jones, the spirit of Wolf, all the people that he has done wrong, you know, so black, all the people that he has done wrong, bruh, is coming to life. We already won this sh spiritual. What we going through right now with these trials and everybody, you know, with this financial situation and everything like that, all that is superficial. That's that, that's the, that's the physical part of it. The spiritual part of it was one because Big, Pac, Wolf, Wolf Mother, all the people that he did wrong, bro, you understand? They already won the battle where we were supposed to win it at. So now we just going through the physical part of it, man. And I want that girl to know, man, that she ain't gotta fear no man. She ain't gotta fear him, nobody else, man. Whenever she needs, you understand, whenever she needs somebody to travel, to go with her, to make sure she all right, you know, I'm a phone call away, man. I'm a phone call away. And I'm, and you know, go ahead with your questioning, man. I just had to get that out, man. Cause that girl touched a lot of people, man. Because all she wanted to do was write music, make music, and, 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 and show her talent and her love to the people, man. And then she got to feel this way, be fearful and scared of her life and stuff like that. Mom, I ain't scared of no man. You understand? I ain't scared of no man. Nobody that got to put their pants on the same way I do. Not at all. And for the people that don't know who Tiffany Red is, that's Cassie's best friend. That's one of Cassie's friends. She was writing a lot of music, and she said that she was writing music for her friends to get raped to. Oh my God, man, come on, man. Start with your interview. Uh, uh, I'm sorry about that, brother, man. That's just, it's, it's, it's crazy to me, man. Man, you know, uh, uh, Leopard don't change his spots, and Diddy been doing this for a real long time, bro. He been doing this for a long time. And now another artist, this artist didn't wait 10 years. You know what I'm saying? He didn't wait 20 years. You understand? He waited a year or two after he stopped working with him and saw he didn't get what he was supposed to get. And he said, yo, listen here, man. I'm putting in my claims right now because I'm gonna show everybody what really happened, what really went down. It's, it's crazy. When I was reading it, I read the, the whole thing. Shout out uh, uh, to uh, Keisha in Kansas City. She sent me the whole the whole documentation, bro, and you know, the whole court thing. And when I'm reading the stuff, you know, uh, it sound from a lot of, a lot of it sound familiar. You understand? And what I mean sound familiar, how he would get 
other girls and get girls um, to try to, you know, convince this guy, you know, or, or, or put him in a sexual situation with other girls so he could do whatever he wanted to do with them. And it's, it's, it's just like the situation somewhat with Sarah and uh, her girlfriend and him and Jock. You know what I'm saying? Bringing girls on to try to convince this other guy to be in a room with another naked man and all this other bullshit. Yo, it, it all sounds familiar, man. I, I, I read the whole thing, man, and it was crazy. And for the people that don't know what you're talking about, because the lawsuit is new, so, you know, some people still catching up with it. Little Rod, he alleges that, you know, young Miami cousin tried to have sex with him in front of Diddy. Yeah, he went into the bathroom, and then she came into the bathroom and tried to, uh, you know, throw herself on him. He didn't want to have nothing to do with her for whatever reason. And then when he came out the bathroom, she continued to try to do that and try to have sex in, uh, wanted him to have sex in front of uh, Diddy and the rest of the people that was in there. You know, that that's, that's how they do, man. They try to use a girl that you might like or you might think you might like, or they think you might like her or whatever to convince you to lay down your guards with them. And he did. Yeah, that's crazy, man. And you're not surprised by none of this. Cause you said that Ja Rule, they did this to him, right? No, remember, remember, remember and people got to confuse when I said that Ja and him was in the room with two girls, with, with, with Sarah and Sarah girlfriend. You understand? He was trying to get Ja to go at Jay-Z. So what he did was try to get another girl, you understand, to do something with Ja, I guess. I don't know, they in the room together. So in, they, in, in, in that thing, I know what he was planning to do because I heard the conversation. I knew what was going on. He was trying to get at Ja, so if he had got Ja in any kind of uncompromising position, he could force Ja to go at Jay-Z. So that's just a, 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 a thing that they used. Lil Rod, he get him in a sexual position and a sexual situation with some kind of girl and then maybe have, get him high, get him drunk or whatever like that. He don't know what he's doing. One of the guys step in and now he doing Lil Rod. Now Lil Rod all messed up in the mind because he started off with a girl, but now he end up with a guy. He trying to put him in some kind of situation like that. They do that all the time in the industry. So did he got a history of doing that? One thing I did see in this lawsuit, you know, Little Rod, he alleges that, you know, Diddy's son, Justin, was helping Diddy, you know, get underage girls. And I guess he was bringing them. I think Justin is the boy that could do it, if anybody. Him or either Quincy. You understand, Justin is a pretty boy. Do you understand? He look young. He around that age, what, he about 25, 26 years old. So he, I don't know about underage, you know, uh, but it's a possibility because you know those girls 16, 15 years old, they gonna like that light skin, that curly hair, you understand? Man, listen here, we got girls that are, what you call them, uh, uh, video vixens. And I ain't gonna mention no names because I don't wanna hear it. They say they were sneaking into parties at 15 and 16 years old. So why you think 15 and 16 year olds ain't sneaking in the Diddy party. So Lil Rod, if he having conversations with him, he may say, yo, how old are you or something like that? Someone say, I'm like 16, I'm 15. Somebody had to tell him they age for him to know. Who you came here with? I came here with Justin. So what did that say? Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. And looking at this lawsuit, right, Little Rod, he alleges that, you know, did he promise him a Grammy if he participated in homosexual activity? I read that, man. You know what I'm saying? And what kind of power do you have when you can promise somebody a Grammy, a Grammy award? Who are you doing something with or who do you know that can promise Beyonce can't, did Beyonce get a Grammy for any, did she get a Grammy for her album or anything like that? Has she got a Grammy? She got Grammys before, right? Yeah, she got Grammys, but she never got one for album of the year though. Right, so if she never got a, a Grammy for album of the year and Diddy could promise a producer if he's in a homosexual act that he could give him a Grammy, 
What kind of power, who he doing, and what he know that he can get that done? That's some kind of spooky sh bruh. No disrespect. That's real spooky. If he could promise somebody. And good thing the kid didn't believe him, because if the kid would believe him, he might have got his booty hole toe up. So my whole thing about it is, listen here, man. He has to have some real power, but he showed us his power. Remember at the BET Awards? Remember when they was trying to go to commercial? And he said, nah, we're not good. Who ever done that, bro? Who ever stopped the people <laughs> from going to commercial? Nobody ever did that but Diddy, bro. So he had some kind of power at one time. We don't know if he still got that power, but at the BET Awards, when they wanted to go to commercial, he did not allow them to go to commercial. So evidently, he knows somebody or he doing somebody, or somebody doing him, allegedly. You talking about when he was giving that speech at the BET Awards for the Lifetime Achievement Award? When he gave his speech, he just kept going, bro. He just kept going and wouldn't stop. And he said, don't, it don't matter how much it costs. We're gonna keep going. And they wouldn't even go to commercial. That's never happened before, bro. Never. And me looking at this lawsuit, he also alleges that Diddy forced him to watch a video of Stevie J having sex with a man. Who, little Stevie? Huh? <laughs> Who, Stevie? <laughs> what Johnson used to call him, Stevie? <laughs> Yo, I read that, man. Um, I don't know if you know this, but then maybe they have a tape that we don't, we, could, we didn't see, because the pictures was a little vague. There was an exotic worker came out and said that was him and not Stevie J. But in order for them to put that in there, they must have clearly thought it was Stevie J or think it's Stevie J. But you got to get this art. Check this out. He knew that this kid admired Stevie J and loved the work Stevie J had done in the industry in the past. This kid looked up to Stevie J. Now, what if Puff told him that that was Stevie J in the tape? And the kid, the guy looked like Stevie J. He did facial, uh, they, his face, he did facial, his face was fixed like he was doing some of the faces Stevie J be making. You understand? So now, the kid could have been drunk, kid could have been high. He was like, yo, Puff could have been like, yo, you talking about this is somebody you admire. Look what he doing. This Stevie J right here. Now, in that kid mind, he may have thought that was Stevie J or he think that's Stevie J. If Puff told him that was Stevie J, it was Stevie J. So people can't say, oh, he lying and everything like that because we really don't know what was said, but the kid said, he told him, this is somebody I admire. This is somebody you got high aspirations for, that you that, that you want to be like. Look and see what he doing. This is what you should be doing too. Wow. That was crazy. And you knew Stevie J, right? I knew Stevie, Stevie J real well, bro. I knew Stevie J when he was with Bad Boy, one of the hit men, when, he, when him and Puff fell out. I used to uh, take Stevie J around and everything, bodyguard him in certain places and everything. Stevie J was one of those dudes. He was a good brother, but he always wanted to be seen. And when you hear these allegations, right, you knowing Stevie J, do you think it's possible that he could be gay? Well, I don't, I don't know his sexuality, but cocaine is a hell of a drug. You understand? And by cocaine being a hell of a drug, that's hell of an answer, man. And he indulging with Diddy like that, and now he's invited to the Diddy parties. In that, in that whole thing, if you read it, he said that Diddy said he was having a sexual relationship with Stevie J. So all I can say is this, man. If two men lay down, how many homos get up? Two. <laughs> in my book. <laughs> That's all you can say, man. You don't know. You know, unless you catch them in an act like that, you understand what I'm saying? 
But if he said, Puff said that he laid down with Stevie J and two men lay down, two homos get up. Yeah, I mean, that's a hell of a quote, man. And if I'm not mistaken, Stevie J, he was with you the night Big got killed, right? Yeah, Stevie J was there. Stevie J was there. And as soon as Big died, he was supposed to get on the plane with us, with them, and go to New York. He rushed to Faith Hotel. <laughs> rushed just to the hotel. He was wearing my cross and my chain, right? I said, Stevie, I'm not selling you my cross. My cross got blessed. He said, let me wear it. I said, yo, okay, bruh. Uh, he gave me 1500 for the chain and then never paid me for the cross. Ended up giving Faith the cross and the chain to give to little Chris Wallace. That's what he said he did with it. You think it's a chance he was cracking Faith back then? I don't know what he was doing, bro. But it's funny they end up now. It's funny he ran to uh, Big's wife when uh, he got murdered. Yeah, that is weird, man. I never knew about that, man. You never told me about that, man. But to get back to this lawsuit, right, Luderwa, he also alleges that, you know, Diddy, he will grope his genitals and he will grope his anus. My man, I didn't understand that one right now because his anus is your act hole. His genitals is his nut. So I guess he had to be naked when Puff was doing that. Where was he at? What was he doing? Because he said that they never had sex. If you read it in the thing, they never had sex. He made claims that they never had sex, but he, how would he grope your anus? Your asshole. How would he play with your genitals? Yeah, it don't make sense. I mean, it don't make sense. How you wake up butt the F naked with two other men in the bed with Diddy and nothing happened. I think he was just trying to save face, man. But do you think it's a possibility that he meant that, you know, Diddy would grope his, you know, butt, you know, instead of anus? I mean, cause I'm, I'm trying to figure out how does that work? You know, somebody groping your anus. You gonna say your butt. He, he, the lawyer would say, what do you mean? He would say, my butt cheeks. There's a such thing called butt cheeks. Your two cheeks. He said anus. The anus is the asshole. How did he get that far? Lil Rod, you gotta say no to Diddy sometimes. No, that shit ain't funny, man. I don't do that. But you gotta say no. <laughs> So from you reading the lawsuit, right, you feel like he had relations with Diddy? When, when me being a former investigator, I think Lil Rod was trying to save face on certain things, that he had somewhat of a relationship, or he was doing some things with Diddy that he didn't want to really come out in that front fashion. Because there's no way that he gonna wake up and his, his, his anus is hurting, and his genitals is all over the place. And he's in the bed after being drunk or drugged and saying nothing happened. And you think that Diddy gonna be in the bed with three other men and nothing happened? It doesn't sound logical. If we're reading and believing what he said in those papers. If you woke, woke up in bed and you was drunk or intoxicated on ecstasy, on whatever drugs that they put in there, roofied you or whatever, and you not, <laughs> and you not feeling right, something is wrong. Wouldn't you say? Something is wrong. He said, he didn't say, we woke up with all my clothes. He said, we woke up buck the F neck in those papers. So if he butt naked in those papers, it is what it is. 
Right, right, I got you. But looking at this lawsuit, right, you know, Little Raw, he alleges that, you know, did it, he'll put his hands on him. But, you know, when he'll put his hands on him, he'll disguise it as horseplay. But he felt like Diddy was trying to groom him, in a sense. Well, with the horseplay situation, I used to see him do that with certain women. You understand? Uh, when he was mad, upset, or, or he he was too old for this, but he would do that play fight shit. You understand? So I can imagine him play fighting with Lil Rob. Cause you know, a lot of people would say what they want to say about Diddy. You know, he got a knuckle game. He will fight you. You know what I'm saying? You his size, you understand a thing like that? Around your size, something like that, he would fight you. He had a knuckle game. He was he wasn't that dude that like people try to say he was some old scared jazz nick. Nah, he would fight you. You understand? So I could see with a person like Lil Rod, he probably was roughing them up, grabbing them, groping them, you know what I'm saying? Acting like he playing with them, but he actually want him to do what he want him to do. So like I said before, that shit he did in the past. So when I read it from Lil Rob, I see he's doing the same shit he's doing in the future. So he was doing this with females too back then when you was around. Right. That that's how that's how him and Kim got into the fight and he, you know, play fight. He used to, he used to play fight with the pillows, like the pillow fight, that dumb shit like that. You know, that's kids to me. But if that's the way they do, that's the way they do. You understand? He used to do it with Kim all the time. So the horse play was his way of grooming you in a sense. Well, I don't, that grooming, that's some new shit. You know what I'm saying? We didn't call that, <laughs> we didn't call it grooming back then. That his horse play was a way of letting you know I could really hurt you.